Thank you for tuning in to the Forgotten Film Channel. Today's forgotten film is the exploitation classic, Test Tube Babies. Kathy and George have a strained marriage. Kathy's been slutting around town. She's been having meaningless affairs. Oh, rather than just splitting up, what they decide is that the answer to all of their problems is to have a baby. The only problem is, is George is sterile. So they go to their doctor and he suggests the newest in medical advances, artificial insemination. The question with this movie is, will they or won't they? Will it save their marriage or will it make things worse? This is the first movie brought to you by exploitation producer, George Weiss. George Weiss uh, produced a series of movies on lurid topics such as this one throughout the 1940s. I want to thank you for tuning in to the Forgotten Film Channel. I hope that you enjoyed the movie. Make sure that you have a great today and hopefully that tomorrow will be even better. It is lovely, isn't it? I hate the thought of driving back to the city. It is too bad it can't last. Why can't it? Why can't things be like always? We do get along well, Kathy, don't we? Yes, George. Well, I guess people would think us silly. What do you mean, George? I'm only a junior architect. 
Well, what's wrong with that? Just that a junior doesn't make the big money. You make more than enough to support a family. Then you've thought about it, too. Of course, silly. Do you think I'd keep seeing you if I hadn't? Think you could be happy with me? I know I will. Well, that was easier than I thought it would be. It isn't the way I imagined I'd be proposed to either. Just so we'll have a good story to tell our grandchildren. Doesn't look like there's much to eat this morning. Oh, is that so? Well, you just close your eyes. Close my eyes? What for? Just close your eyes. Now? Now. Strawberries and cream. Mm-hmm. Honey. Young lady? What's the occasion for all this attention? Oh, I just saw them in the market yesterday and thought you would like some. Do you realize this is my favorite breakfast? Of course, darling. Do you realize this is the first time you've served them to me since our honeymoon? Yes, darling. And do you realize that was nearly a year ago? Yes, darling. Well, then, why haven't we had them more often? But, darling, strawberries don't grow in the snow. It's no excuse. You've been happy, sweet. Very happy. No regrets? None, darling. Do you have to work tonight, George? I really should. Why, honey? You've been working so hard lately. Can't you take tonight off? Why? Do you have anything in mind? Darling, don't you remember? We're supposed to go to Bill and Janet's baby shower this evening. Baby shower? I thought they just had a baby. Are they rabbits? You goof, this is for the Grayson's baby. Don't you remember anything? Oh, sure, I'd forgotten. Well, all right, I enjoy things like that. Say, why don't we see those kids more often? It seems like they're always busy with their families. They don't have time to get out with the gang anymore. Maybe they don't want to. Why shouldn't they want to? Honestly, Kathy, do you really enjoy these parties we've been going to? Not especially, George, but we have to have some recreation. I agree, but... They do so much drinking lately. I know most of them drink a lot, but they're just having a good time. Kathy, that isn't all. What do you mean, darling? Well, sometimes they go a little too far. I'm interested in someone else's wife, and I don't want someone else making passes at my wife. Nobody's making passes at me, darling. I don't mean you, but I've seen plenty. 
Take Frank Grover, for instance. I know he's a friend of mine, but I can't get used to the way he tries to take over every girl he sees. You take things too seriously. I'm sure he doesn't mean anything wrong. Well, maybe not, but he takes in a little too much territory. You're just jealous. Just because Frank's single and can run around with as many girls as he wants, you think he's a wolf. Well, if he's not a wolf, how can he give such a good imitation? Oh, George, let's not quarrel about Frank. He isn't that important. Okay, sweet. I still don't like these parties, though. I know, darling. I really don't enjoy them much either. Well, what else can we do for entertainment? You work late so often, and when you do come home early, you bring with you. Maybe I have been neglecting you, sweet, but it's, it's just because I want to make a real home for you. I like a nice place, too, but I'd like to have you take enough time off to enjoy it with me. I guess it is pretty dull for you at that. I'll try to take enough time off from my work so we can be together more. Speaking of work, I'd better get going. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Frank Grover's coming over this morning. He's going to take me to work. What on earth for? It's about a divorce case he's handling. The husband works in my office, and Frank has to pick up some papers. Well, speak of the devil. Never mind, honey. I'll get it. How are you, Frank? I'm at death's door. I went to a little social gathering last night, and the lemonade just about killed me. You'd better ease off on that lemonade, chum. Beginning to get the best of you. Oh, I'll be all right. I'm just a little short on sleep, that's all. Who was at the party last night? Oh, everybody you know. The usual crowd. How come you and Kathy weren't there? Work. You and your midnight oil. What are you trying to do, knock yourself out? And tell me, how do you keep that beautiful wife of yours entertained while you're working? Oh, okay. Kathy doesn't mind. She knows I'm working for our future. Good morning, Frank. Oh, I feel great. <whistles> hey, you look terrific, Kathy. Thank you. Are you going to Bill and Janet's baby party this evening? Baby party? Stop it, Kathy. You don't really expect me to sit around drinking tea all evening. Besides, I, I get the jitters around these people that get themselves all wrapped up in their kid. Why, Frank, what's the matter with children? What are you getting so defensive about, Kathy? You and George aren't thinking about the pattern of little feet, are you? I don't think having children is such a bad idea. Oh, uh, are you ready to go? Oh, say, I almost forgot. Are you two going to the country club dance this Friday? Lord, Frank, I don't see how we can make it. Next Friday catches me right in the middle of my month in reports. I'm sorry, I know Kathy would like to go. Well, why not? If I do, will you get me home early? Sure, <laughs> Kathy, anything you say. Go ahead, Frank, I'll be right on. Okay. Goodbye, Kathy. What is this, Kathy? Are you going to step out on me? Don't be silly, George. If you didn't have to work, we could go together. You don't mind if I go by myself, do you? Frank will bring me home early. But, darling, how can you want to go with Frank? Oh, Frank's bark is worse than his bite. I don't think he's nearly as bad as he's supposed to be. Anyway, I can take care of myself. Now, you'd better get going, darling. We can talk about it tonight if you want. I said I'd be home in a few moments. You better get that gigolo out before I get there, or I'll kick him out myself. Matter, Sugar. George is pretty sore about you being here. Maybe you'd better leave, Frank. The indignant husband, eh? Catherine, you make me feel melodramatic. Or maybe it's just mellow. Frank, George is all right. He doesn't mean... He's just... Just a husband. 
Is that it, Kathy? Frank, you know that's not what I mean. I think you'd better go. Thanks for everything. <laughs> Kathy, you're precious. Okay. Kiss you a gigolo. Good night. Why did you do that? <laughs> well, did you enjoy yourself? Mm-hmm. I would have enjoyed myself more if you'd been there, though. Why? Did Frank run out of gas and make you walk? Or did it just make you? Don't be stupid, George. Frank is just a friend. He knows I'm your wife. He wouldn't try to play around with me. Oh, no. No, of course not. He's a perfect little angel. He wouldn't touch a hair on your head unless he thought he could get away with it. Well, I'm not going to argue about it. I'm too tired. I think I'll get ready for bed. You don't trust Frank, you can trust me. I know, Kathy. It's just that I know Frank's tricks and I worry. I've seen him in action, you know. Well, darling, you don't have to worry about me. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself. And if the occasion should arise, I can take care of Frank, too. I hope so, sweet. Anyway, darling, I only went with him to make you jealous. So that's your alibi. Okay. Come around here where I can see you. Hey, you look sharp in that thing. Well, well I saved it to wear for you. You better. And it's your own fault. The one you got for my birthday. It's a good thing I'm your husband. <laughs> the way you talk. George, what did you think of Bill and Janet's baby shower the other night? What's the matter, honey? Trying to change the subject? No, darling. But I was just wondering if you'd want to be a father, too. After seeing how proud and happy Bill was. Well, sure, darling. But what brought this on? Well, I was just wondering about what you were saying the other day. I mean, about having a real family of our own. I remember, Kathy. I meant it, too. Well, then, darling, can't we st have our baby now? I mean, can't we start planning on having our baby? I'd like to have him soon. It's kind of lonely around here when you're not home. Anyway, I think you'd look cute changing his diapers when you come home at night. You already decided we're going to have a heat. Well... I thought we could have a boy now. Then after a while, we could give him a little sister to play with. We could make a nursery out of rear bedroom easily enough. Hold on. Wait a minute. Let's get Junior on his way before we start worrying about his sister. Besides, what if Junior's a girl? I never thought about that. And what if he is? We'll just have to keep on trying till Junior comes along. Okay, darling. Okay. But really, Kathy, I want a family as much as you do. You know, darling, you talk a lot about wanting a family. Don't you know the talk won't get you anywhere? Woman, what are you hinting? George, I'm sleepy. Let's go to bed. Sleepy, huh? Go to bed. Talk won't get me anywhere. Indeed. what you said last night, didn't you? I mean, it wasn't just last night, was it? Certainly I meant it. But then we can go ahead and plan on a baby. I mean, we're going to have Junior. You're going to have Junior? You are? Kathy, do you feel all right? Do you want me to call a doctor? Well, it seems my Prince Charming has deserted me. 
I trust he doesn't think he can get away with it for the rest of the evening. Oh, well, Don will see that those two don't spend too much time together. I doubt if this Don person will be with us much longer. He's quite disgustingly drunk, isn't he? Well, Don can go on like that for hours. Wait till he tries his magic tricks on me. Here he comes now. Hey, you. And you. How about cutting a rug, gorgeous? Cutting a rug? I'm afraid I don't understand, Mr. Williams. He means he'd like to dance, Miss LaFleur. <laughs> this is the first time I ever need an interpreter to talk to my babe. My dear Miss Williams, I am not yours, and I most certainly am not a babe. If you must be entirely plebeian, kindly direct your attention elsewhere. Okay, babe, no offense. My dear sir... Rather than using your energies on me, I would suggest you pay a little more attention to your wife. Ah, they look real cozy, don't they? <laughs> that Frank is quite a card. Say, let me wait. Have you seen my latest card trick yet, huh? Mr. Williams, please. I haven't the slightest interest in your prestidigitation. My prestidigitation. and prestidig... <laughs> hey, heck, sir, I didn't expect you to be interested in my prestidigitation. I just wanted to show you my card trick. Never mind, Don. Why don't you show Phil your card trick? Okay, Kathy. See you later, babe. Hey, people, got any more of that hilarity juice? Sure, Don. I'll make you one. Don, this is Jerry. Well, you're real cute. Here, take one. Pick any one of them. Okay, Don. Now what do I do? Show it to everybody. What do I do now, Don? Put it back on the deck. Okay. Hold them tight. What do I do now? Some trick, some trick, some trick. <laughs> hmm. Like what? You're quite a magician, Don. You're quite a girl, beautiful. How did your audience like the performance, Mr. Williams? Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> Hey, how about you and me cutting a rug? I told you before, Mr. Williams. No, thank you. Oh, that's all right. You're quite welcome. Say, baby, why don't we sit the rest of this one out? I've got things to tell you, and this isn't the place for it. Oh, that's what I call real interesting. What were you going to tell me? Oh, you've got beautiful eyes, you have a beautiful mouth, you have beautiful shoulders. Mm, and before you go any further, let's get a drink. Okay, come on. It seems I'm deserted after all. I doubt if Frank took what's her name into that other room to teach her legal tricks. Oh, they'll be back in a minute. Maybe they just wanted to get away from the music for a while. They had better come back to where the music is. Uh, this is real cozy, real cozy. Well, Don, how about a drink? Thanks. Let's have a toast. Here's to it and to it again. If you don't do it when you get to it, I hope you never get to it to do it again. Broad-minded, isn't he? <laughs> Say what? Am I interrupting? Yeah, beat it. <laughs> oh, now that's what I call music. You know, 
know, you remind me of a gal I saw once in a burlesque show. I'll bet you could do as well as she could. Hmm. Think I couldn't? Why don't you try it? I'll bet the gang would get a big kick out of it. Okay, I will. Come on. Hold everything, gang. Hold it. Betty's going to show us how they dance at the better burlesque houses. Go ahead, baby. That's your cue. Say, look at that. That's all right. Oh, my little honey needs a foot in the road. Hold everything, babe. I'll be right there. I better put my coat. Take it easy, boy. It's all over. How was that? Pretty good, huh? Pretty good, huh? <laughs> Magnificent, Don. Hey, that calls for a drink, pal. Here, yeah. drink it down. You need it. You're a real pal. Sure. And a boy. Oh no. Hey, Phil, take care of him, will you? Where is my hero going now? As though I couldn't guess. Oh, he's just taking the frozen tour. He'll be right back. He'd better. This farce has gone quite far enough. <laughs> well, that's the end of Don's tricks for tonight. I guess I'll have to show you my tricks. Don't tell me you do tricks. Sure. Just look. Say, is that gin? Sure. You gonna drink it? You just wait and see. Da -da, da -da, hey, you're da -da, terrific. Da -da. <gasps> oh, Phil, I'm all wet. What shall I do now? I guess you'll have to take off that dress and let it dry. I haven't anything under it. Not anything? Well... <laughs> Me. Wait, there's Don's shirt. You can put that on. I'd say. Mm. Hello. Hello, George. Darling, can you come home right away? What's the matter, Kathy? Okay, I'm on my way. the lipstick off your face, darling. That shade is a little too vulgar. What's the matter, dearie? Can't you stand a little competition? I can compete with any stripper, amateur or otherwise. Stripper, huh? Say, now I remember you. I thought I'd seen that bleached mop before. Dolores La Fleur. Dolly Flowers of the Star and Garter, wasn't it? Sorry, I didn't recognize you with your clothes on. Frank. You've been slumming a game. Why, you cheap tramp. <laughs> 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 
to say I told you so, but I did tell you. You know that. Oh, George, please, let's not quarrel about it. You realize, Kathy, that we'll never have another party like this again. I never want another party like this. Kathy, what's happening to us? Why are we breaking up? We are, you know. Neither one of us is happy. I love you, Kathy. You know that, don't you? I know you love me. It isn't that. I just feel that in some way our marriage is incomplete, that we weren't meant to be married to either. Somehow I feel that if we were, we'd have the children we would, just as other people do. Oh, I'm all mixed up. Do you mean that you want a divorce, Kathy? Oh, no, George. I don't think I want a divorce. I don't know what to think or what I want except a real family, children of my own. I guess we're willing to settle for these parties as long as they were fun, but they aren't fun anymore. I guess we need a family. George, I think I'll go to a doctor in the next few days. What for, darling? Well, we've been married long enough now so that something should have happened. The other day I was talking to Mother, and she asked me when she was going to be a grandmother. George, I told her I didn't know. Oh, what did she say? Not very much. I asked her what she thought I should do about it. And she said that if I were really worried, why didn't I go to a doctor? Yeah? Did she say any doctor in particular? Well, she told me about a doctor right downtown. She said he's a very good obstetrician and gene... Gene... Genecologist? That's it. Anyway, I thought that going to see him wouldn't do any harm. Do you think we should? No, I don't think so, but... To probably tell you there's nothing wrong, but what do we have to lose? Anyway, it would be better than going on like this. Oh, George, I do so want a baby, and I want to make you happy, too. I know, darling. We'll phone for an appointment first thing Monday morning. We'll forget this old party ever happened. Will that make you happy, darling? Yes, George. Doctor is expecting you to give me a ride in. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Bennett. Yes, Doctor, this is Mrs. Bennett. How do you do? Please sit down. Thank you. I judged from our telephone conversation that you and Mr. Bennett are having difficulty in starting your family. Well, yes, Doctor. We thought that possibly you could tell us what's wrong. I mean, so many of our friends are having children while we aren't. Do you suppose you could find out what the trouble is? Possibly. I think the first thing would be to give you an examination. Would you mind waiting in the other room, please, Mr. Bennett? Sure. Will you prepare Mrs. Bennett for an examination, Miss Mason? Yes, sir. Now, will you remove your 
bad things behind that screen, Mrs. Bennett? All of them? I think so. Down, please. Now, will you just sit on the table, please? You, doctor. Mrs. Bennett, I can see no reason at all for you to worry about your physical condition, nor about your ability to bear children. But, Doctor, if there is nothing the matter with me, why aren't my husband and I having the children we want? Are we just unlucky? Luck, as you call it, may be the reason in your case, Mrs. Bennett. But then again, there might be other factors involved. I think while Mr. Bennett is here, we'd better ask him to come in. But surely you aren't suggesting that there is something wrong with George, are you, Doctor? <laughs> Don't be alarmed, my dear. I'm only suggesting that we be sure of our facts before we attempt to arrive at a solution of your problem. All right, Doctor. How was it, sweet? Was everything all right? Uh-huh. He wants to see you, George. Why? What for? I guess he wants to examine you, too. Well, I guess it's all right. I'll be back shortly. Sit down, Mr. Bennett. I'd like to ask you a few questions. All right, Doctor. Mr. Bennett, have you ever had any form of venereal disease? No, Doctor. I never had anything like that. Mumps? No. Any serious injury? No, Doctor. Why, do you think it's me? Mr. Bennett, from my examination of Mrs. Bennett, I can find no apparent reason why she should not become a mother. We can only surmise that you may be the reason for your trouble. But, Doctor, what shall I do? Take this card to Dr. Farrell, whose office is in this building. He's a very competent urologist and one who specializes in that particular phase of your problem. He will examine you and send his report to me. If you can come in tomorrow at, say, 2 o'clock, I'll have all the facts and she'll be able to give you your answer. You'd better bring Mrs. Bennett with you. Certainly, Doctor. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Mason, will you make an appointment for Mr. and Mrs. Bennett at 2 tomorrow, please? Yes, Doctor. We'll see you now, Mr. Bennett. Thank you. See you later, honey. Have you found out anything yet, Doctor? Yes. I have, Mr. Bennett. I guess that means that it's me that I'm sterile. I'm afraid that's the word I was going to have to use, Mr. Bennett, from the looks of this report. Being sterile means that I can never become a father? I'm afraid that in your particular case, Mr. Bennett, that that is what these findings mean. What do you mean, my particular case, Dr. Wright? Isn't there some way I can get around this? No, there isn't. 
In some cases, operations or medication or other treatment may be beneficial. In others, this sort of thing is without help. Unfortunately, according to the report of your urologist, you fall into this latter classification. I don't understand it, Doctor. I always thought I was perfectly normal. At least I, I seem to be normal. Yes, I understand. It is quite common for a male to have a normal sex reaction in every way and still be sterile. I might explain that to each drop of male reproductive fluid known as semen, there are as many as 15 million tiny sperms, each in itself capable of inducing pregnancy. Enough of them could be housed in a thimble to father the entire world ten times over. In some cases of temporary sterility, the sperm count may drop as low as 20 or 30,000 sperms to the drop of semen. In these cases, treatment may be effective. Isn't there treatment I can take? No, Mr. Bennett. According to this report, your sperms are all completely inactive, or to put it bluntly, dead. Oh, I see. Well, I guess that's that. You know, Dr. Wright, that throws a lot of our plans out the window. I'm sorry, Mr. Bennett. Would you like to bring Mrs. Bennett in? Dr. Wright, I, I hope you won't think I'm a coward, but I'd sure appreciate it if you'd help me tell her. Certainly. I can quite appreciate your feelings. You may call her in. Well, it's about time. I thought you had deserted me. George, what's the matter? Dr. Wright would like to see both of us, darling. All right, but what's wrong? Sit down, please, both of you. George, what's the matter? Kathy, would you mind if we didn't have Junior? You mean we can't have children right away? Oh, George. I mean we can't have children at all, dear. Why not? What Mr. Bennett is trying to say is that he is incapable of fatherhood. No, Doctor, you can't be serious. I'm afraid I am, Mrs. Bennett. I guess we'll just have to adopt our family, Kathy. I won't. I don't want a ready-made family. If I'm going to have children, I want them to be mine, my own. But, darling, what else can we do? Dr. Wright says I'm sterile. He, he must know what he's talking about. I suppose so. I don't know what to say, Kathy, except that I'm sorry. If you two have decided against adoption, there may be something I can do. That is, if you want your own child. Why, doctor, you don't think... No, no, Mrs. Bennett, you misunderstand me. Here, let me read you this letter by way of explanation. Dear Dr. Wright, I'm writing you this letter on my daughter's first birthday. My husband and I are so happy and cannot express to you the gratitude we feel for telling us about artificial insemination and helping us to have our baby. Nothing in our lives has given us such happiness, and when I look at baby Dorothy, I bless God that we were sent to you. My husband joins me in wishing you the greatest of success in your fine work. Well, what do you think? Does that appeal to you? I don't understand even yet. What is this artificial insemination thing? Have you ever heard of it before, George? Seems to me I've heard it mentioned before. It sounds as though it might be connected with what you were telling me a few minutes ago, Dr. Wright. Well, yes, in a way it is. It consists, in effect, of removing semen from a normal, healthy man and implanting it in a receptive woman. Pregnancy takes place as in normal conception, and a normal birth is the result. To all intents and purposes, this method is the same as a normal conception, except, of course, that the mother never sees the donor. How can that be, Doctor? I thought that... The... Uh, no, no, Mrs. Bennett. Contact between the father and the mother is not necessary, nor, in this case, desirable. The male fluid is withdrawn from the donor and stored under refrigeration until it is needed. At that time, it is introduced into the prospective mother by artificial means. That is, by a syringe or by means of a capsule. Oh, I see. Well, what about the selection of the father? How can you tell it is donor, the word you use, is satisfactory? We do that by examining his background. 
We look for the same qualities and characteristics in him and in his family background that we would want to appear in the child. If his family history reveals certain admirable traits, either physical or mental, we can be sure that these same traits will appear in him and in his children. You see, each male sperm cell and each female egg consists of 24 sections called chromosomes. Now, each of these chromosomes is the determining factor in some part or phase of the infant. One chromosome might cause the baby to have black hair. Another might determine whether his eyes would be blue or brown. And still another would be the determining factor in regard to his size. But Dr. Wright, has there been much work done in this artificial insemination field? I mean, is it just a theoretical thing or has it been done before? A tremendous amount of work has been done in artificial insemination, Mrs. Bennett. I'll admit that up to the past few years, a great majority of it has been done with livestock. But the results with all sorts of animals and lately with human beings have been exceedingly gratifying. Uh, one more thing, Dr. Wright. Is there any danger in this? The only possible source of danger in artificial insemination, Mr. Bennett, is the same danger that is present in ordinary childbirth. In the hands of a competent gynecologist, however, the patient is perfectly safe. Well, Dr. Wright, I think my wife and I had better have a talk about this before we decide anything. Thank you for your help, Dr. Wright. We'll let you know what we decide. All right. Give what I told you careful consideration, though. Goodbye. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, Dr. Wright. Will you bring in the files on our insemination donors, please? Dr. Wright certainly was something to think about, didn't he? What do you think we ought to do, Kathy? I don't know, darling. I'm a baby terribly, but having someone else as its father doesn't seem right. I'd rather you have a baby that way than have you as unhappy as you've been and take the risk of losing you. Besides, it would be your baby, which is more than we could say for an adopted child. I think if it's all right with you, I'll ask Mother what she thinks of it. Certainly. I think that's good. Your mother's an intelligent woman, and having her tell us what she thinks might help us decide. All right, darling. I'll ask her to come over tomorrow. Now, I'd better get us some dinner. And the doctor assured us that this artificial insemination wouldn't be dangerous. Tell me, Mother, what do you think we should do? I want a baby of my own, but I'm not sure that I wouldn't feel guilty every time I look at it. Why should you feel guilty, Kathy? Naturally, it wouldn't be George's baby, but he understands that. I know that George will understand. He knows already how badly I want my own baby, but I'm a little worried of what he may think in the future. Darling, you're being a little bit silly. You know that George loves you now, if only from the fact that he's willing to let you have a baby through this artificial insemination. Then you think we should go through with this? I certainly do. It's obvious that you not only want a baby, you need one. You're getting neurotic about this business. That's a relief to know that you think we should have a baby, as the doctor suggested. I was worried about several things. George, myself, what all our friends think. Why should they know? None of them knows of George's inability to be a father, do they? No, of course not. Then you don't think we should let them know that George isn't the father of our baby when we have it? I don't think it's any of their business. There's no reason for anyone to know that it isn't George's child as well as your own. That's what I think, too. Of course, Kathy. Now I'd better be leaving. If I were you, I'd call George right away and tell him that you want to go through with this thing. And then I'd call Dr. Wright. Mr. Peterson, well, I'm sure you'll find that you'll be all right in the morning. Mm-hmm. I understand. Well, if you're not better in the morning, give me a call. Very well. All right. Goodbye. I'm very happy to see that you've reached your decision. I'm sure that you'll find it was a sensible one. We're sure of it, Dr. Wright. It would be necessary for you to sign this paper, which is your permission and waiver of responsibility for this insemination. Right here, please.
on this side, Mr. Barron. Will you come in, please, Miss Mason? Thank you. This will take about half an hour. Will you wait outside, Mr. Bennett, sure. please? Miss Mason, will you prepare Miss Bennett for an insemination? Thank you, sweetie. As to the second, well, you must realize that there's a certain element of chance involved, just as in a normal conception. If this one doesn't work, we'll just have to try again. When will you want to see me again, Doctor? Two weeks, I think. Will you make the appointment, please, Miss Mason? Doctor, will two weeks from today at the same time be satisfactory? Will I need any other treatments, Doctor? No, my dear. Not if this one is successful. You'll be no different than any normal woman bearing her child. And I see no reason for you to tell your friends that George not the father. In fact, from my past experience in these cases, I strongly advise against it. I guess you should know best, Dr. Wright. Well, Miss Bennett, you two aren't the only ones I've had with this problem. Do you realize there are an estimated 5 to 10 percent of the married couples with same difficulty? And I thought we were an original family. <laughs> It's the first time it ever happened to me. I mean, to Kathy. But why does it have to take so long? Why don't you stay with her? But, George, Kathy is okay. But where is Dr. Wright? Where did he go? Why is he with her? He'll be here soon enough. My goodness, women have been having ever since the beginning of time. And mostly without Dr. Wright now. Dr. Wright, how is Kathy? Is she all right? How long is it going to be? Kathy's going to be fine, George. You better get hold of yourself. Why don't you sit down and smoke a cigarette? I've smoked a whole pack of those things since I've been here, Doctor. I'm worried about Kathy. Yes, I know. Say, uh, why don't you run out and buy a pack of cigarettes? I haven't got any either. Be sure nothing will happen while I'm gone. I'll get you a pack too, Doctor. Go ahead, George. I'm sure Catherine isn't even in the delivery room yet. Or Dr. Wright wouldn't be here. Oh, bless our newborn infant. Our baby, God adore. Till love shall gently lead us home to the eternal shore. Are you happy with your little family? Yes, honey. This is everything I've worked for. Is my family happy with me? Of course, silly. You've been a wonderful father. It's been a wonderful five years. Look, Mom. Look, Mom. What is it, dear? I'm trying to take on my baby brother. <laughs> 